be a week for miracles. You ought to say it like you mean it this week. This week will be a week for miracles. And if you believe it, you ought to give God some praise right where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
God of miracles, signs and wonders. We expect to see a miracle. We decree that a miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God, because you're amazing. There is no God like you. We worship you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are Alpha and Omega. But God, we call on the miracle worker, the one who was there for Moses, the one who was there for Adam, the one that was there for the lady with the issue of blood. We call on the miracle worker. Yes, Lord. Yes,
praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> it's true. He's the God of miracles, signs, and when he's when he does what he does, he'll make you wonder. How did this happen? I didn't see the angels. I didn't see the grace. I didn't think I was going to come out like this. Man, I was in the dungeon of despair. And where did this joy come from? He's the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. I don't care what you do. You twist my arm, break my leg. I'm not going to I'm not going to not believe that. I'm I am for I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him. I'm just persuaded. Good morning. Bless you, the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's in me. Come on, everybody. Let's bless his holy name. God is great, greatly to be praised. And I will bless him at all times. His praise will continue to be in my mouth. This is the day that the Lord has made. I I've already made my decision. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. So you might as well come on and magnify him with me. Let us let us exalt his name together. You know it's 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 um it's a bigger praise when we do it together. I, I you know I remember you know playing sports and my mom be on the sideline and, and I tell you what I hit the ball and you could tell whose child I was. My my little mom was over there hollering by herself. Go on, Donald, run, baby, run. She was by herself. But I tell you what, that thing was working for me. I could hear my mama. And as I'm running around the base, I could hear, run, baby. He can't get you. You're faster than him. Run. But I tell you what, when the team won, all the parents yelled. See, the praise gets bigger when we all do it. You know, it's, mama could praise him by herself. I could praise him by myself at the house. Or the car. But listen, we, we it's time now. The team has won. Victory is ours. It's, it's already done. That which is to be has already been. <laughs> I've been I've been doing some personal study. And I'm telling you, you want to know you want to know the book of Revelations from beginning to end. Just go to Genesis chapter one and just go and just just go from 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 the the, the, the first day to the the, the 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 seventh day and you're done <laughs> and you're done and 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 in watch watch what did Jesus say? Jesus said it is finished. He said the same thing where God rested. <laughs> and then and at the end of the book, it said, John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's done. <laughs> Whether I want it or not, there's a new heaven and a new earth. Whether you want it or not, there's a new. Listen, I don't care how much money you get. You can't stop it. I don't care how much anxiety you get. You can't stop it. I don't care how many friends you have. They can't stop it. I don't care how many enemies you have. They can't stop it. It's, it. Listen, and then then Paul has enough nerve to come back and say, and there remaineth a rest for the people of God. We're worried about something that's already over. God's already made his mind up. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Listen, so that's why I got to mortify my flesh. I got I to gotta, I gotta do away. With my covetousness, I can't be chasing a new car because my neighbor got a new car. I can't be after a new house because my neighbor got a new house. Listen, I gotta, I got, I, I gotta, I, I gotta put to death the things that will keep me from being like him and just go. Won't you just settle your issues this morning? You know, none of that's my lesson. I'm just talking and talking and talking. But what? None of that's, <laughs> none of that's my lesson. Won't, but won't you settle some things in your life that that keep returning to harass you? <laughs> it's finished. It's finished. And for those of you that had the propensity to talk to the devil, I don't know why he ain't got nothing that you need to hear. But if you want to talk to him anyway, you might as well tell him, go on, leave me alone. It's finished. If it, No matter what you do to me, you can't keep me out of eternal glory. So the only thing you can do is steal my lunch and make my tire of the car flat and put a, a, a leak in the roof in my house. It don't make no difference. This, not, this, this, ain't, this ain't home. This just where I parked for a few years. That's all. It's finished. So those of you that, get, that, that like to talk to the devil, touch your neighbor and tell them the devil can't. Okay, whatever. <laughs> tell him, touch him and tell him it's finished. <laughs> I love Jesus today. You know why? Because he loves me. And that you you want to know a mystery? Pastor, I want to know the mysteries of God. Figure out why he loves you. There's a mystery. I have no idea. No, 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 no. This raggedy life that I live and try to call it faithfulness, that raggedy life that you live, some days you pray, some days you don't. Some days you do, some days you don't. 
Can you hear what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. This, oh, God. No. Ah, get your Bibles. We're going to have some fun. Communion today. Amen. You ready? You prepared? Here we go. We're ready. We're we, 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 we going to have communion. Um, I got so much going on here. Let's see. I got some announcements. And then thank you again to, to all of the workers, um, our, all of our food workers and everybody who, who, who who's working on, on, get your Bibles, Daniel, everybody who's working on, on Wednesdays now, the days have shifted. Okay. Thank you. We in a new month too. Where the October babies? All the October babies. God bless the October. You know, they they tend to get jealous. They really do. They tend to be jealous because we have so much fun in the summertime. We don't celebrate our October babies. October babies from your pastor. <laughs> I love you. I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, June, July, August, September, babies. Y'all do know that you know you get more attention because we can go out and and we can have um um well we, we used to be able to have picnics again. We'll have them again next year or the year after, whenever. It's all good. Listen, I I just want to be here to have them. Okay, I just want to be here um to have them. So, but to all of <clears throat> to all of our October. Saints, we love you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, I've been, I've been, how much time do I have today? If I start early, we could get going, couldn't we? I've had the sneezes and sniffles. I told my wife, she went out here and brought the COVID. And she said, no, I didn't. <laughs> it was a, a, a joke in our house. You know, if you, can I help you with something real quickly? Be your house comedian, Okay. You got to find some things in these perilous times because you can find nothing on the news to bring you happy and detach from that. Every time your phone buzz, don't check it. Don't check it. Um, Here's a special report from the Washington Post, special report from CNN, special report um, from MSNBC, special report. um, Well, I don't do Fox too much, but (laughs) special report, special report, special report. Let, let, Let me help you. Just. Find something to make you laugh. Get some reruns of Martin or something. Just something to make you laugh. Be the house comedian. Um, th- th- something. I-, I tell you, just do something. I-, 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 I just find myself needing a break from it all. And just laugh. And just laugh. Oh, let me speak of laughing. Have you heard the joke that said... <laughs> I just play it. I don't, I don't know. No, I've got no joke. I'm being silly because I want you to take a look and realize that your joy is important. It, it, it's, it's important to smile a little bit. It's important. It, it, no, it really, laughter is good like medicine. I tell you, um, Bishop Barron and I were talking yesterday um, as, as per our normal Saturday call, and, and, and he, he was so serious. And I said something to him, and he just bust out laughing. He said, man, you are so stupid. What's wrong with you? And we both just laughed and laughed and laughed. And then we went back, and we was talking some theology. And then we was talking some history. And then we was talking um, um, some eschatology. And then and then I said something again. So he said, man, that's why I call you in the middle of, the blood of Jesus on Calvary's cross. We talking, and I, I yeah, I go, I say some something, something foolish. Um, I, I said, man, I bet Peter was over there, uh, get, you know, frying some fish or something. I hope he, I hope he ain't choke on no bone. I, he said, how you gonna say Peter was choking on a fish bone? I, I, I said, man, you gotta laugh. You gotta, you guys, something. You, you, you gotta laugh. I hope that's not too sacrilegious for you, deep folk, because um, I learned a long time ago, deep folk drown. You know, just just have a good day, saints. That's all I'm saying. Just have a good day, okay? Have a good day. This is the day the Lord has made. Yeah, He's a God of miracles. Jamal, ain't that what he? That's what you said, didn't it? Ain't that what you said, man? He's a God of miracles, signs, wonders, and don't question because we believe in your power. <laughs> I love it. Oh, boy. 
maybe next week they'll let me invite me to rehearse. So they still, y'all pray for the worship team because they still rebellious. They don't invite me to the rehearsals because they know I would show off. I show all the way off. I go from Ashley's mic to Justine's mic. I go in the back and get Jocelyn's mic, and then and then I get her Dawson. Man, I I show off. I, I mother's board. Y'all know I would, right? So I will break out in the song right now. Y'all don't think y'all don't think I'll sing right? I, I somebody sing, Pastor. I will sing right now. Okay, I was just playing. I did, did, <laughs> I'm silly. I woke up this morning. I woke up grateful. Why, Pastor? Because I woke up. Can we start with that? Because I woke up. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. My house wasn't on fire. I didn't wake up in the you know in, in, in the emergency room. No ambulances was making noise over me. I, so I woke up and determined I make noise over myself. Because I'm here, saints. There's, I need somebody to tell God, thank you, because I'm still here. Thank you. All of us know someone that's been affected by the pandemic. Let's don't live in a bubble. We all know somebody. If it wasn't in your family, it was it was your, your it was your, your 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 co-worker's uncle's friend. You know somebody that's been affected, okay? Um doesn't mean that they passed away, but some of us, many of us know quite a few that have passed away. And so in these times, you need somebody to just say, listen, you're gonna be okay. Just smile a little bit. Now, I know I went overboard for five minutes telling you to smile, but it's I'd rather spend five minutes telling you to laugh than counsel you for 55 minutes because you're depressed. So therein is your morning counseling. Daniel chapter number six. Let's go to God's word today. Daniel chapter six. My pastor's aid committee still sleep. Malia, she still sleep. She slept in. So she don't, she not gonna get she not gonna get no oodles or noodles for lunch. She slept in. I'm punishing the baby. Because she normally passes aid, she bring me a she bring me a tissue or something. Because sometimes my eyes run and my nose don't feel. She, 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 everybody text Malia and just tell her she fired. You got Daniel chapter six. Now I really want to talk to you about something serious. I'm prefacing this intentionally. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might account unto them and the king should have no damage. Watch how this works, saints. Watch, 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 watch. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents of, and princesses and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Why would the king set him over the whole realm? Because an excellent spirit was in him. Why watch? Verse four. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion, nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we've not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Ah. Ah, so they can't find anything wrong with how he's doing his job. Now they want to find something wrong with how he worships. Okay. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto the king, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God, note the language. We got together and said, if anybody ask a petition of any God 
or man for the next 30 days. Except you, king, save thee, O king. He shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter not. Wherefore, King Darius, sign the writing and the decree. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I think this is really amazing. Well, well let's just read through it and then we'll, then we'll unpack it, okay? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in the chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Let's pause right there. The book of Daniel, fa fascinating, fascinating because th th there comes a time the prophets spoke of this captivity. It's known, it's known um, in theological circles as the second captivity or the Babylonian captivity. So, you know, this is so easy. Um, the first captivity was when um, Israel was in Egypt. Moses, go down, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay, so we, we, we're so familiar with that. Um, but historically, um, I am not... Um, persuaded that the church has done as much study in the in the history of what goes on right here, because um, when Israel came out, and then um, okay, they wanted a king, and God gave them Saul because they cried after him. And remember, Samuel went to God in prayer, and and God told Samuel, Samuel, this people they don't cry after you. They said, um, God told Samuel, he said, Samuel, this people crieth after me, okay? And so when they cried after him, then he told Samuel to go down and anoint um, Saul to be king because that's what the people wanted. And sometimes you got to be real careful what you ask for because you you, you might get it, you know, and, and they wanted a king that they could see and they wanted a democracy and they wanted a, they wanted a leader that they could vote on. And they wanted to have some say so. The Lord wanted them to be um, a theocratic nation, a nation ruled by God and his principles. And they wanted to be a democratic nation. You know, so all by itself, um, there's a there's a cycle here that that I don't I don't want to veer off into that. But that's a whole discussion that could be had um, because um, here in the United States, wherever you're viewing that viewing this. Um, we live in a democratic society, um, and we try to um, set it up in our constitution um, <laughs> that 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 um, you know we're we're one nation under God, indivisible. You know, but it's a democratic society. So how do you have a democracy and a theocracy at the same time? <clears throat> and so returning, but making America, excuse me, returning back and making America great again is a challenge all by itself because the original constitution said that African-Americans was only two thirds a man. And so, um, yeah, you want to return and make America great again, where certain class of people are not even considered a whole man. And so it wasn't until a hundred years ago where women was even considered um, to, to, to be able to vote. Okay. Um, you wasn't even a woman. Um, you was just, just, you was just a woman. <laughs> okay. And then the Equal Rights Amendment Acts in the 60s. Okay. I, I don't really want to do the American history. I just want to say democracy opposed to theocracy. And if you're wise, you picked up on that. Democracy. And so we've got every all these people trying to make America great again, and it never was yet. It was better than a lot of places. Now, I, I'm Americanized. Listen, you take me and put me in the islands, and I like the water. But I don't always like the food. And after a day or two, I'm ready to come home because and then and I, I, I like cable. I like to be able to flip it. I'm, I, I am. I do. I confess mine. How many of you confess yours that that the things here that 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 I that I enjoy the, the privilege of. But when you try to compare it and make it 
the word of God because a Eurocentric slant on theology has bent your arm to believe that this is the way. Okay, um, I, I, I would beg, I would beg to differ with you and encourage you to study and show yourself approved unto God. And so all of that is, is, is my cordial way of introducing this, this Middle Eastern history right here where Israel um, got their king, Saul, and then the whole time Saul was king, David said he never sought the glory of God. Then comes King David and he restores worship. And and then, okay, it, the whole um, kingdom that David built. And then um, after the death of David comes his son, Solomon. Okay. And then uh, after the death of Solomon, the kingdom is split. Ten tribes to the north and two tribes, Benjamin and Judah, to the south. That's key. There was a civil war, okay? And and the kingdom is split now. Now you got all of these prophets that have to come back. You got Isaiah that's got to prophesy, and you got Jeremiah that's got to prophesy, and you got Ezekiel that's got to prophesy, and you've got um, Malachi, Habakkuk, and you got to know where they fit in and who they were talking to. Some talk to the northern kingdom, Israel, and some talk to the southern kingdom. This is key. Please don't, please don't drift off on me now or, or flip through the channels on the TV. Um, I really want to help you through a seminary class that's going to bless your life. Okay, so you've got two tribes to the south. That's Judah. Ten tribes to the north. But the problem, the problem, when the kingdom split, Worship didn't come up to God as it should have, which was technically what happened with Solomon, because Solomon married all of these other these 700 wives and Solomon wasn't content to have the local girls. So Solomon got wives from many different nations and Solomon allowed Solomon, the wisest man. Don't let don't let wisdom always fool you. Solomon, the wisest man. God said, I'll never give another man that much wisdom. Solomon allowed his wives to worship their gods. So Solomon allowed the kingdom to be tainted with, with idolatry. That was the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other god before me. But for the sake of his, his, his lust and his covetousness, Solomon gave in um, to the worship of his wives. Oh no, come on, boo. Let me bring in my God. Oh, listen, your God ain't good as my God. So whatever, you can't bother nothing. Wrong. Wrong. Careful what you let come in your house because you love the people that's bringing it. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Careful. Careful. Whenever you have teenagers, I've had them, you got them. Sometimes you come in the house and you smell incense because they just going through a phase. No, 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 no. Don't burn that. No, 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 no. Don't burn that. I'm sorry. Let me let me back off of that. Run your house like you want to. Not in my house. Not in my house. That not, not in my house. We're not going to allow the fragrance of other gods to come in. It's going to be seductive. Wow, that's a nice smell. What is that? Oh, that's just something I got as I Georgetown that picked. Okay, no, 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 no. Solomon allowed, and which was the, watch, that was the beginning of the whole downfall of Israel. The choice that he let foolishness come in his house unrejected. I, I, I don't. I, oh God! I don't know. I don't know if everybody can hear this or not because this is this going to be really hard, and I'm going to need. And I, I, can I say this before I go any further? I'm going to need your full attention for this lesson today, because it's probably one of the strongest lessons that I'm going to get to thus far this year. Thus far this year, okay. And so, when when that fell, God was upset. God was angry with the people he loved, okay? And, and, and the prophets begin to talk about it, okay? And, and then we get the text confused. For I know the thoughts that I think of you, to, to bring you to an expected end. What God was saying to them, if you go back and read it carefully, 
was, I know the thoughts I think of you, but you are going to go through this. You are going to go through this mess because when I blessed you, you failed to worship me as God. And when you when you fail to worship me as God, I'm going to allow this to come back so you'll see how good you had it. And you'll see how much I blessed you. And you'll see how much I loved you. You'll see how much I overlooked to make you happy. I overlooked your missteps just because I love the smile on your face. I overlooked your failures just because I wanted to see you skip and dance and, and enjoy your life. But the more I gave you, the more you required of me for you to be happy. And you begin to treat me, God, unfairly. The more I did for you, the more you thought I should have done for I should have done for you. The more doors I opened for you, the more doors you felt like you deserved me to open. Wait, wait, wait. Where is your gratitude, Israel? I, I need you to understand that, that you lost your sense of respect for the relationship that I want with you. And uh, America, 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 wow. Do you hear what I'm saying? Wonder, well, I don't know who wrote it, but it says America, America. God shed his grace on thee. And he crowned your good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. And now you got, you got men walking the streets in 2020 with guns saying that, that you can't take my gun. I, 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 I listen, I'll squeeze off around uh, 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 this M4 right in you. You got, you, 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 listen, look where we are. <laughs> you, you, you got a boy that left Indiana and he went to Milwaukee and he, he shot to what, two or three people and then drove all the way back to Indiana while everybody saw him kill. And because he was a particular color, nobody bothered him and they didn't arrest him for what, two, three days later. And then you've got a leader that said, well, I think he feared for his life. If he'd have stayed himself in Indiana, why, how'd you get from Indiana two states over with an automatic weapon, an AR-15, how do you get that shooting five five threes? Are you serious? Bullets this big, and then you go over there and people that are doing a peaceful protest, you come down the street and walk past police cars because you have a particular color. America, God shed his grace on you, and now this is how we repay him. Oh, Israel, for your activities. You are going into bondage. And God reached over a couple of nations. He reached past Jordan. He reached past Saudi Arabia. He reached past um, way down. I reckon I ran into the Persian Sea, the Persian Gulf area, and said, Nebuchadnezzar, you have conquered everything from this region all the way up to Turkey, just south of what we know today as Russia, all along the Black Sea all the way over to Turkey. Oh, you got that? Drop down into Israel and get them. I kept you from the, the, the Israelites, but they no longer want to worship me. Now go down there and you have permission to put my people in fear. You now have permission because they've been gossiping. They've been running their mouth. They've not, they've not obeyed my covenants. They spent my tithe. They won't give their offerings. They feel like they can run it better than me. You have permission to bring bondage to a people that have developed racism. Oh God, here we go. And 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 now this 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 group is better than this group. Reuben is better than Gad. Levi thinks he's better than Judah. We got all these isms and schisms in my family. The choir gossips against the ushers. The mothers are running their mouth. The deacons are weak and they're half drunk half of the week. And God is saying, enough already. Tell you what I'm going to do. If in fact 
You want to get it right with me? Let me help you with what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow what you thought would never happen. My God, the only place safe it's going to be in your house. And that might not be too safe because the Uber driver or the, or the, 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 the with the people that bring your food, you know who I'm talking about. The, the I eat so, who eats so, Uber eats so. Yeah, that's what you call it. Don't laugh because I'm not laughing. This is serious because you don't know what the folks that's bringing your food. I'm going to stay in the house so I don't catch the pandemic. Well, who going to feed you? Are you, did you, did you see their medical report? Are you sure that they do not have COVID-19? Are you sure? Okay. So, so until you get sure about some things, let's pay attention to the question that right now on the table is how does God feel about where we are? Why is this? Why is this? Why? Is it beyond? Is it beyond reasonable common sense? The mask, just, just a mask, just a, it's not a matter of your constitutional right. There's nothing in the constitution that said you shouldn't wear a mask. It's my constitutional right. Maybe you haven't read your constitution. All of you constitutional rights people, Okay, by a show of hands, how many of you have read the Constitution? Oh, yeah, none of y'all did. None of y'all. But you're waving big flags. You, 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 you never read the Constitution. You just, you're regurgitating something that you heard somebody say. Well, Pastor, you sure are coming for the white right wing. No, that's a setup because I'm saying to most of the church that you're regurgitating what you heard somebody over here say. Have you, have you read your constitution? Do you know what God said? Do you know why Israel now has to go into Babylon? So much for the introduction. And so here comes Nebuchadnezzar. And you know what? It's really bad to be, to be slow-minded because even sinners don't want you. Nebuchadnezzar only took the best. He took the best economists. He took the best um, doctors, the best medical influence. He took the best um, um, politicians. He pushed. He took the best attorneys, people who could argue the case. He and all of those that that wasn't too bright. He just left them where they was. The folks that still think that they can, they can go to the Ocean City and party during the pandemic, not too bright. He just left them where they were. <laughs> Jesus, Donald Anthony, did you just say that? I didn't mean to. I did. The folks that still think that I just need to get out the house. I got cabin fever. I'm going out. I don't care what. Okay, well, when you do, please do me a favor and do not stop by here to see how I'm doing. I got cabin fever, but I turn mine over to Jesus, okay? Or I get in my car and ride just loops and loop myself back in the garage, okay? So when you do, go ahead as they did in the state of Florida, and the governor said, well, you just can't leave people blowing in the wind. We're just going to open the state, and whatever happens, happens. Stupid. I'm on record for calling the governor of the state of Florida stupid. How do you lead? And the same pandemic that started in February, actually before that, is here. There's been nobody to move anything. There's been nobody. No, I need to come at you strong today because I need you to be here in the spring. I need you to be here in the spring. And laughing over it won't keep you here in the spring. You'll be gone by Thanksgiving. Maybe you didn't see the projections that as the flu comes in, that the pandemic is going to multiply probably by four times, four times as many people. So we've got 200,000 people that are dead now. I'm sorry, did no disrespect, over 206,000 because each person is one too many. So you don't overlook anybody. However, four times, so you're projecting that somewhere between 800,000 and a million people will be dead by the first of the year. And you are trying to ease out. Oh, wake up. Wake up. 
The Lord is preserving you behind the door with the blood. Wake up. I got to sound an alarm so you, because you won't get this from nobody else. Hear, thus says the Lord. Now watch. They come, Nebuchadnezzar king. He comes. Oh, and then he sets himself up and he, he, he takes Israel. Then let's get away from all of that. All that's still in the introduction. And I don't have time to do much more than that because I got to get to what I'm after. Okay. And he, 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 Israel is in captivity again. What was the problem? Worship. What was their problem? Come on, everybody. Give God a clap. Give God a hand. No, 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 no. They that worship must worship in spirit. Not out of gratitude. Praise is excitement over what he's done. Worship is love for who he is. See, I can only praise my wife when she cleans the house or fixes a good meal or goes to the store and buys me a new shirt or, you know, you know, oh God, the new sheets on the bed. I like that. Or she iron and starch my shirts or whatever my praise is for. Praise is for something that's happened. So if God doesn't give us a new house, he doesn't get praise. If we don't get a new car, he doesn't get praise. Huh? No, no. Worship. For God is spirit. John 4, woman at the well. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And here's the catcher. For such the father seeketh that. Everybody that he blesses and wakes up today can praise him for another day. But only those who love him will seek his heart. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. So, so, so what? <laughs> Whoa, you can text somebody, whoever you think is watching, say, don't leave yet. It's about to get worse. Hold on. So Nebuchadnezzar comes, invades Israel, <clears throat> takes them off. Just in case you think the journey was good, um, there, was no, there was no Amtrak. So now you have to march. Through the desert, through the desert, with whatever you got that you've been kidnapped with as a nation, away from the few little things that you had that you thought mattered. Isn't that amazing? And he takes them down to Babylon. Okay. I, I think that you might have missed a great point. I think you might have missed a great point. Could I backtrack just for five seconds? He didn't take the ignorant with him, or the unlearned, when I say ignorant, those without information. The people that went in bondage was the ones who thought they had everything going. That's what we keep missing. When we say bondage and slavery, we think of the guy who robbed the 7-Eleven and owner. No, 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 no. He took the lawyers in bondage. He took the doctors in bondage. He took, he took the rabbis in bondage. What do you think happened to Daniel? He took the people in bondage who thought they had it all. The poor folk had nothing to lose. Or they go from apartment to apartment. They go from their sister's house to their uncle's house. No, 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 no. No, he took the folks who thought they had it together. And those are the ones that can't sleep at night because they're afraid <clears throat> They're afraid that they're going to lose their six-figure home now. <laughs> oh, boy, somebody just got it. They're afraid that they're going to be two, three notes late on their Jaguar, their Mercedes, their Audi A8. Mm. Yeah. He took the prominent people in bondage and, and brought them all the way down. Now nobody's nobody's calling for them, so they gotta they gotta pay the notes on their own jet out of their own pocket. Yeah, this. Yeah, the, you can't fly first class because nobody wants to fly now. Oh no, we I only fly first class. How you flying now? How you doing? And that's what happened to Israel. Because they failed to worship. Because they labeled themselves as worshipers. You check out somebody's Facebook page. They'll broadcast it. They'll, he'll say, um, I'm a student at, at Duke Divinity School. 
Um, I'm a proud dad, husband, and I'm a worshiper. <laughs> you have to broadcast it. I mean, you, you have to broadcast. You have to post that up. I'm a worshiper. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I anyway. They, they, they Ooh, somebody you like, no, he didn't. <laughs> I love you. I want to sound this alarm for you. I want to sound this alarm. Because if I don't, life will sound it for you. In the next few days, in the next 90 days, life will sound it for you. Hmm. Whew. I, I, I'm like, let me jump over here. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost just told me, no, son, take your time. Take your time. Sound an alarm. Sound an alarm. Because alarms was, was sounded to them. Jeremiah sounded an alarm. Isaiah sounded an alarm and they ignored the prophets. That's what Jesus said. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou who stoned, you killed the prophets. You don't have no respect for even the men that come and say, thus saith the Lord, you do what you want, like you want, with who you want, as often as you want. And then you say, I know God. <laughs> oh, how many times Jesus said, I would have gathered you, but you would not. How many times do I have to warn you? You're about to lose your family and you're still playing games. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm not moving on past that. How many times do I have to warn you? Shake yourself. Good enough has not been good enough. See, we, we always like to make positive confessions. You know, today is going to be the best day of my life. Tomorrow is going to be even better. Are those positive confessions or covetous confessions? I mean, no, no, they could be positive. Okay, they could be positive. But some of us, you and I, can we keep it real? No, 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 no. I need everything on my hands right here. Can we keep it real? We're not in the best days of our life. We got folks on here today that God's going to heal. They, they, when they woke up with that pain, they said, Lord, I, I'm not going to complain. But this is not the best day of their life. This this is not the family picnic where they was running, playing softball, and, and watching their babies and sitting around laughing. People are, people are struggling just for their peace of mind right here, their sanity. This is not the best day of their life. Sons are running the street. Daughters are cussing. Husbands are frustrated. Wives are through. Everybody just living in the same house because they ain't got nowhere to go. This is not everybody's best day. But the question now is, here it is. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit there and continue to let life suck you in? And here you are, you're 30, looking like you're 58. And I mean that in the best. You Listen, so much worry drips off your face. Or are you going to say, in thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust? And whatever God does is what God does. And I'm going to say yay and amen to it. I'm not going to explain it to my uncle. I'm not going to explain it to my son. I'm not going to explain it to my brother. I'm not going to tell my mama. I, that's my problem. I'm trying to get all of these opinions from so many people and I know God's got something else for me and I can clearly hear the voice of God telling me, trust him, trust him. Take my hands off of it. Let it go. As long as I hold it, I'm really keeping what I love in bondage because I'm raising my children to be wishy-washy when it comes to the things of God. They see me with a melancholy attitude, and so they don't have any fear of the Lord anymore. Hmm. Donald, what, well, man? You preaching better than they saying amen. I know, but I'm saving one or two. Well, go on and finish preaching. Well, I think I will. And so they go down to Babylon. Every now and then you have to encourage yourself. The Bible said David encouraged himself. That's just my way of doing it. They go down to Babylon. Why did they go? Because they got at ease in Zion. They got at ease in Zion. They knew more about the housewives of Potomac than they knew about the book of Ezekiel. They knew more. They, when they picked up their Bible, they got bored. But when they got the remote control, their eyes popped up. Oh, they knew more about the flesh than they knew about the spirit. 
And then when they get in trouble, they want the spirit to welcome them. Well, the spirit is like, well, who are you? Hey, you, oh, you back. I missed you. Can, can, before, wait, wait, wait. Before you ask me about your job, before you ask me about the mortgage, can we just talk for a little while first? Oh, God, you know I need you. Yeah, well, that's why I kept waking you every morning. I thought you'd get the clue. Oh, God, my life is jacked up. I know. I've been trying to talk to you. But when I talk to you, you feel you feel the Holy Ghost and you call it a good day. And you turn the radio up and you, and you listen to your hip hop. I've been trying to reach my people. I hear the voice of the Lord saying to me, I've been trying to reach my people and they're distracted. Pastor, what do you hear God saying? When are we going to come out? I've been trying to reach my people and they're distracted. They're distracted. And Israel, I got to rush. Israel goes into bondage. Nebuchadnezzar takes them in. Nebuchadnezzar gets high-minded. God knocks him out in the yard, and 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 <clears throat> I think it's in chapter four, and he and and he begins to grow nails, claws, and fangs like a wild animal until the Bible said, "I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes into heaven and confessed to God." It's not till Nebuchadnezzar got his right mind back that God took the beast mentality out of his mind. He went out in the yard. And then, and then after Nebuchadnezzar, here comes Belshazzar. Belshazzar, not Belshazzar. Belshazzar was Daniel's name before they named him Daniel. Okay, don't confuse Belshazzar and Belshazzar. The difference is a T. But here comes Belshazzar. <clears throat> he ruled for a little bit. Oh, I don't have the time there to talk about that. But he ruled for a little bit. And after Belshazzar, uh, he has this dream. Daniel interprets his dream. Mine, mine, tikel, you first. Remember that? It's in chapter five. And this is the writing he says um, that was written. Daniel says, Mine, mine, tikel, you first. And this is the interpretation of the thing. Mine, God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet. Okay. Yeah. Put a chain on Daniel's neck. Yeah, they promoted him because he could interpret a heathen king's dream. I made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Isn't that good? That Daniel kept his grace and his anointing even when he was in a foreign place. Can you and I do that? Will we do that? Keep our grace even in a foreign place. And that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, that's the king of the Chaldeans was slain. <laughs> and Darius, the me, took over. That's how chapter five goes out. Okay? So in verse number 30. So, so, so that's that's how it ends. So now Darius is dead. Now, I, I mean Belshazzar is dead. Now we got a new king. And here it goes. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes. He's put in a new government. Hint, hint. Daniel is now lived through three administrations. Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> Belshazzar, and now he's in Darius. He's maintained his walk through three different administrations, notwithstanding he had one in Israel. So Daniel knew. Yeah, somebody felt that. You felt that shift? Daniel knew how to be proper before his God, a lost art anymore. Daniel knew how to keep his God on his side. Even the sinners rewarded Daniel for his righteousness. They put a gold chain on him and made him third in command because he had a word from his God. 
during this time, don't compete with co-workers. Don't compete with the community. Walk with your God and God will give you favor on their hearts. And I'm not talking about just the open walk. I'm talking about the behind the scene walk in your heart. Okay? Keep love in your heart. Keep that aggressive animosity away from you. Keep love. Don't go to work. I don't care if you work on a trash truck. Drive it carefully as if one of the brothers is on the back and you don't want him to fall off. Whatever is your job, I, I, I don't care what you do. Whatever's going on, do it to the glory of God Almighty. This is a word and a warning. It's a word and a warning. Take me seriously today. Take me seriously today because some people are at the verge of the biggest breakthrough of your life and others are on the cliff where you're about to fall into the abyss of your own choices. Take me seriously today. And Daniel got promotion because he never compromised his walk. In the time of trouble, God gave Daniel the interpretation for the heathen and the wicked. They didn't go to the White House for a photo op. They went to say, Cam, put your cameras down. Mr. President, let me tell you, this is what the Lord said. Go, don't, don't go up there to be no yes man. Don't, don't do that. Don't do it. When God puts you in high places, don't put, no, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't be high-minded and lifted. When you go, when you speak to power, when you speak to power, speak as the oracle of God, because you may not get a second chance. You may not get a second chance. Some of us are still playing with grace for too long now. You, Some of you have been in your situation for 8, 10, 12 years. How long is too long? It's time now. Some people don't need to be on your phone. Some people need to be blocked every time they call. All they're giving you is the latest sin. Have you heard? Have you heard? No, and I can't fix them neither. I, listen, if the my, my pastor said something to me years ago when I first went to North Carolina to pastor, and I had a situation to come up um, in the fellowship that I was in, and I said, I, I called back to D.C., and I said, Bishop, let me ask you a question. Yada, 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 yada. And he said to me some of the best advice he could give me. He said, son, if God can't change them, what makes you think you can? These men are full of the Holy Ghost. And they refuse to do what the Lord said. What are you trying to do? I said, uh, I think I'm trying to get ready to go get lunch now. I think I've got my answer. If God can't change some people, why they've been calling you for the last 12 years with foolishness? Listen, you got to save yourself now because every time you leave a door open, can I help you something? <sighs> I used to hear this. I, I used to hear this. I used to hear this. I think it was when, when, when my firstborn came, when Donita was born, went to church, got her out the car, carried her inside. One of the church mothers was in the lobby. Minister Wright, come here, come here, come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. And while she was talking, she was pulling the blanket up over the baby's head, just pulling the blanket. I'm like, what's this woman doing in my life? She said, the cold that you can stand, the baby can't stand that. And just because you ran out with no coat, don't you ever bring the child out with no coat. Let me help you something. When you open a door in your house for foolishness, the cold that you can stand, your children might not be able to stand it. Somebody please say, Pastor, preach real hard because that's good. When you open a door, you might be able to walk through it, but your family may not. Your family may not. Your family. Your, your, your daughter may want a $2,500 pocketbook with, with no job and a boyfriend. <laughs> your son may want a brand new Mercedes at 19 and don't want to go to college. The doors that we open, our children can't stand the wind of it. 
The breeze will cause pneumonia. Okay. Oh, God. Daniel maintained his walk. Here we go. Here we go. I don't know. Who... Please don't turn me off. I, I'm, I'm just asking you. Oh, my goodness. I've been, I've been 45 minutes already. And so Darius got message from the new people he'd appointed. And, 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 and let, me shorten the, let me shorten this up so I, can get to, so I can get to what I'm after. Will you believe all this was an introduction? Okay. I just did all that to try to get to chapter six to what I was saying. So you'll have a foundation on why what's about to happen is happening. And so they came to him and they said, oh, king. And when they saw that, when they saw that Daniel got promoted, they didn't like that because he didn't worship the way they worshiped. Can I tell you this? Yeah, folks will be upset. And I don't know why I keep preaching on folks today. Ooh, but people in, in your surroundings will be upset because when you lift your hands, God shows up. Huh. Yeah, they know that you used to be a drug dealer and, and they know that you used to you used to be on the corner and they know that you've been divorced uh, 18 times and they know that that your your history is strong. Your history is strong, but they don't know that that is the engine behind your worship. My history is so strong until I have to tell God aloud, hallelujah, because I'm so grateful that he could look beyond all of that and see I still needed him. And everybody won't celebrate the fact that God still loves you as much as he loves them. And when they saw that Daniel got promoted, they said, King, hey, yo, 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 King, let me pat you on the back. Here's what we need to do, man, because you knew right here, and we want all the attention to go to you, brother, man. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, King. We, 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 we wrote this up for you. Matter of fact, King, we helped you out, man. We already wrote this up. We wrote a decree. Mano Shema Satan Doromo Noshe. Rendo Mo Shema Satan. King, we wrote a decree. All you got to do is sign it. Now, this decree says that can't nobody go back. To, to nobody's nobody's past, they can't talk to none of Nebuchadnezzar's old people. They can't they can't talk. Oh no 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 to, to none of your predecessor stuff. They can't talk to none. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. This is really fascinating to me. They said they said King, tell you what, these people we don't want them. We don't want them to do nothing. So here, here's how we're gonna do this. You know you still got some folks that's loyal to Belshazzar. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to kick all the old school people out. And I'm going to help you find out who's on your side. So no Nebuchadnezzar folk. No Belshazzar folk. King, if you sign right here, this decree right here say that anybody that asks anybody for anything other than you, King, for the next 30 days or... If they pray to another God for the next 30 days, that they should be put to death. That's how much we love you. We want to see folks die that don't think like us. Say what? Yeah, everybody that don't think like us, let them die. King, all you got to do is sign it. <laughs> you, you, you're my dog. You, I, I got you, man. And then all the other 120, they said, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. King said, yeah, I like that. He signed off. Yeah. Because they knew that some Jews still trusted Jehovah. And folks will set a trap for you because they're jealous. See, can I help you something? When you worship right, even though your life may not be perfect, folks get jealous. You're hard to forget. Oh, yes, you are. It's hard to forget you. Folks will set a trap just because they learned worship from you. Whew. They will set a trap for your life just because they don't like the fact that you have access to the king. And look at this. Oh, God, I'm going down to verse 10 because I'm out of time. I got about eight minutes to, 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 to plead my case and, and close. Are you ready? Watch this. Verse 10. So strong. So strong. So strong. Now when Daniel knew 
that the writing was signed. Ah, when Daniel knew, they just told me, by the law, I can't pray in the public school. The law just said that I can't talk to the, the God that saved me openly. The law just said, when Daniel knew that the, no, 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 he didn't pray. He didn't pray not knowing that my prayer time might cost my life. That 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 kneeling before God is going to change every dynamic of my life. When Daniel knew they signed it, Daniel said, well, you ain't bring me and you can't keep me. And God been a keeper whew, all my life. When Daniel knew, my Lord and my God, that they signed the decree. When Daniel knew that ain't nobody else going to pray for me like I can pray for me. And now the body of Christ has got to the place where they don't really want to seek God. They want to seek folk who they think sought God. Okay, y'all didn't get that. They, they don't want to seek God. They want to talk to somebody that they think is close to God. I don't know why, because the folks that's close to God don't really know <coughs> your intricate, intimate, real problems. They don't know that. They just know that you have problems in your marriage. They don't know that you have problems in your marriage because you remain covetous and you can't get a grip on your attitude or you're insecure and you can't fight through your insecurity. So now they have to live with, with you, sir, because you, you, you still need to be self-righteous or live with you, ma'am, because you still are influenced by the labels in your dress and not the commitment on your heart. They don't know that, that, that you go from job to job because you can't find peace because you can't make peace with the folk at work. You still fighting everything because you don't like it because it hurts your feelings, sir. So you go from being a bus driver to an Uber driver and now you're trying to, trying to, to own your own business and you want to buy some more bitcoins. Brother, you got to bring that attitude under some objection. You can't hate folk because they're different. See, you want folks to give you a word about your situation, but you don't want to go to God because you know God's going to talk to you about you and not your situation. And Daniel knew what the older patriarchs used to tell us young ministers coming up. I like what, what, what Bishop Merritt said yesterday to me that Bishop Barnum said. He said Bishop Barnum rebuked him. He said Bishop Barnum heard him preach. And when he heard him preach, he said, son, you ain't never going to make it as a preacher. He said, but but you're my spiritual father. Why would you say that? He said, because every time you go into a congregation, you preach like that congregation. He said, you better get on your knees and find out what your identity is and you preach what God gave you, he said, and always come out of a place the same way you went in a place. Don't take on the spirit of the place. He said, you go and give what thus saith the Lord, and that's it. He said, now, Mr. Bishop Merritt made me laugh. He said, and Bishop Bonner told him, now get your butt out there on the altar and lay down before God until you hear from God himself. And he said, he looked at Bishop Bonner, and Bishop Bonner said one of the famous quotes of the patriarchs. He said, I'm never going to do your praying for you. Oh, hallelujah. I'll pray for you, but you got to do your own praying. And the church right now is looking for everybody to do the praying for them. And then you go to bow your head over your food. God, I thank you for this food. Let it be nourishment for my body. Bless the hands and fix it in Jesus' name. That's not prayer. That's just blessing the food. Let me help you with something. When your situation get dire enough, you'll stop picking up the phone, asking somebody for counseling. Go to the wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We are killing our leaders because we're requiring our leaders to do our praying for us. You need to do your praying for yourself. Drop your anchor in God and stay on your face for an hour or three hours or a day or three days. You have no answer because you won't do your own praying. And when Daniel knew the decree was signed, Daniel went on back in 
Satan and say, y'all do what y'all want to. I got to talk to God right now. And Daniel bowed down three times a day. He bowed three times a day and he had people peeping and watching. He said, I know you're watching, but this is the only way I know to get out. This is the only way that I got. This is the only way God will fix it for me. I got to talk to him for myself. Somebody lift your hands and say, here I come, Jesus. <sighs> you know this story. You know it a different way. You don't know it this way. You know it as Daniel in the lion's den. Because when they caught Daniel praying, Daniel knew that there was death on his head, but he prayed anyway. I believe Daniel thought this way. It's my opinion. I believe he thought this way. I'm going to die if I pray. But God knows in heaven I'm going to die if I don't. So I might as well take my chance with God. And they said, oh, king, king, you remember you signed this? King said, yeah, yeah, I did. They said, well, Daniel, that number three guy, he over there talking to his God. But Daniel had gotten favor with the king. And the Bible said that the king dreaded it. He didn't like it. But he had to go by what he said. They said, Daniel, I don't want him. And they took Daniel to the den where the lions was, threw Daniel in there put a rock over the, over the lion's den. I wish I had time to develop that, but I spent too much time in the history of Israel because they put a rock over the cave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They rolled a stone up on it. Ooh, God, I thank you, but the stone got rolled away. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, I love you. Oh, God, did somebody hear what I said? And they rolled the stone up over the lion's den. And the king was up all night because he loved Daniel. And while the king was up, he didn't sleep. Sleep had left him. And the next morning he got up and the Bible said that the king was sad. And he went to the stone and they rolled the stone away. Whew. And he said, Daniel, anything left of you, Daniel? You, Daniel, you, you, you all right? And Daniel said, oh, king. And the king jumped. Daniel said, live on forever. I'm that guy that was praying. And with every temptation, the Lord will make a way of escape. You don't get put in prison if you ain't praying. Some people avoid it because you're not going to be loved. But we can't do. Let me help you with something. Pastor, not going to keep doing all your praying. I can't because the grace of God is wearing me out where I am and calling me to another level. And I'm not going to keep praying for you while you keep talking to people who talk to you about me. I'm not going to keep praying for you while you continue, my God, to eat everything that sends your high blood pressure up. I'm not going to keep praying for you. You know you're a diabetic, and yet you eat five candy bars a day. You're going to have to start doing your own praying and ask God to break the desire that you have for sugar, to heal your body. Yes, I'm going to pray, but you're going to have to start doing your own praying. We can't keep praying for you. Your house is going to be lost. Your children are going to be on drugs. They're going to be harlots. Your wife is going to leave you. Your husband is tired of your foolishness. How much longer? Pastor, you're fussing. I don't mean to. I love you. But how long will you halt between two opinions? You know what the problem is. Fall on your face and say, it's me, Jesus. Hear me, God. Bend this will to conform to your will. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. God, I need for it to be acceptable in your sight. Go tell my disciples and Peter. He still loves you, but you got to do some of this for yourself now. You can't keep falling under the umbrella of Friday night prayer. And you, you know we pray at 7.30 and you show up at five minutes to eight and you stay for till 10 after. Mm, mm, they feeling that tonight. I, I feel they feeling that tonight. Stop patronizing us. Get in or get off the line. We don't really care. Listen, I started my, the, listen, the first time I ever opened my mouth to preach it was I had four members, four, not counting my four children, I had four members. So I'm not after the mega church. I'm after pleasing God. And you got to hear this because this lesson right here will save your family. And when Daniel knew, life said, don't you pray about this. Daniel went up there. And he remembered Solomon's prayer when he dedicated the temple. He said, Father, if the day ever comes and they can't get here, he said, Lord, if they just look toward Jerusalem where I built the temple, would you hear them? And the Bible said that Daniel's 
windows. It lets us know that he went to the window. And the implication out of every Hebrew rabbi's teaching is this, that the windows faced westward towards Jerusalem. And he got in his window and said, Jehovah God, you know I love you. I'm at awe at everything you do. And he did it three times a day. <laughs> he prayed knowing he wasn't popular. He prayed knowing that he was in captivity. He didn't pray, God, when you go bring me out. He was prospering in captivity. He could have flipped and became an Uncle Tom anytime he got ready. But he maintained the status of his relationship with God. How are you doing with your walk? How are you doing? Will your children be lost because you can't be brave enough to conquer your flesh? Conquer your emotions? Are you going to turn out just like your father, man? Are you really, brother, are you really going to be like your dad? I don't think so. Woman, are you going to be like your mama? I don't think so. I think there's a God in you. Am I going to be like my dad? No. He did all he could. I'm not blaming him. He did what he knew. But God is requiring more of me. Do I want my sons to be like me? God, no. I want them to be way better than me. But I got a point, a path to better, not to break down. I said, I got a point, a path to better, not a path to break down. Pastor, I don't know who you're talking to because I got a prayer life. Daniel prayed three times a day. Well, maybe this message is not for you. Maybe you'll pray with me that God's grace would fall on the whole body, that we will all seek him. Okay? I got a feeling that Daniel's crowd wasn't many. Daniel's people was few. You still want somebody to do your praying for you. We will pray. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. I know it. I know it. Listen to all the critics. I love you. But I love you. You got to have critics. Amen. They, they keep you on your toes. I know. I'm th but to those of you that have the ear, you know what I'm saying. You, you know. Daniel, the text said, oh, my God. And when he knew the decree was signed, he still went and prayed. He still went and prayed. When they said no public gatherings, it don't stop us from praying. It doesn't stop us from turning our face to the wall and say, God, I, I, I can't get to the gathering, but you could gather around here. I can't get to you, but you can get to me. <laughs> I guess if you get to me, I got to you. Saints, Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Daniel was in a terrible situation. Terrible. He had so much power, they signed a law to keep him from praying. Read the text. The king signed off on it because his ignorant advisors deceived him. And he was sad about it. And you need to read the rest of that and find out what happened to those people that trapped him. See, careful when you set a trap because it'll go off on you. Yeah, the lions had, they did have dinner. It just wasn't Daniel. Yeah. What they, what they, careful how you keep pronouncing judgment on folks because judgment came out your mouth. <laughs> oh my. You just, don't want it to come back on you. That's why I say don't put your mouth on nobody because those words got to return one way or another, one way or another. And those men that came against Daniel, the lions ate good. I said the lions ate good. <laughs> Deception backfired and Daniel prayed. Am I talking good to anybody? Do you know what happened? If you don't spend your afternoon in front of the television today, if you say, Lord, this COVID thing is serious, huh? God, did you make me the elder of my community? 
Can I get on my face and say nobody on my street is going to die of COVID? Lord, do I? Well, let's try it and see. Lord, did you make me elder over my family? Can I pray and plead the blood over my sisters and brothers that none of them contract this disease or any other disease? If there's any disease in my family, can we come against it? Well, let's pray and see. All you can get is what you got now. <laughs> no result. But what happens? How would you feel knowing that if I had got on my face, my uncle would have got healed? My nephew would have came through that surgery. How would you feel and just say, if I had got on my face, you got power, saints. It's in you. I wanted this lesson to grip your heart so that God can have your life. So that you can be as committed to love as some folk in our society are as committed to hate. But it doesn't work as long as everything in, in your life is, is about who likes you, who don't like you. Oh. I'm changing jobs. These people here get on my nerves. Why? That job is prep for your million dollar business. And as long as you got the wrong attitude, God going to leave you there and let them stay on your nerve because he got a plan for you. But it only happens if you can check yourself. Check your attitude at the altar before you go to him. And all the saints would teach us to pray this. God, I'm not even hiding who and what I am, just as I am without one plea. And that that blood was shed for me, Lamb of God, I come. And when we go to communion today, is anybody, I, I can't even see. I, probably, I don't even know if we're still on the air. I don't feel nobody praying for me today. Uh, is anybody talking back to me today? Yeah, I can't even see the monitors. That, that's okay. It might be best because somebody might be saying, you big head preacher, get off the line. I don't know. But, but there's two, three, maybe eight of y'all who are saying, Pastor Wright, pray with me. But you ain't going to have to do all of my praying. I'm about to talk to God until he's going to be saying, oh, Lord, is that him again? He back again? Yeah. Where are the saints that say, Pastor, you know what? I appreciate the nudge. I'm getting ready to do my own praying. I, I've been I've been I've been chilling here lately the last 18 months, but I'm getting ready to do a piece of praying. I don't care what my daughter, my son, my cousin, my nephew, my husband, my wife think. I'm getting ready to do a piece of praying about me first. And when I get me right, the scriptures don't say Daniel took his wife and his children. The Bible said, and Daniel went and prayed three. Sometimes success is a lonely walk. Mm-hmm. Elder D, go somewhere and sit back down. I said, you just jump up. You hear what I'm saying? Sometimes success is a lonely walk, but it's ordered by God. So there's nobody beside you but him. And then he will bring people into your life who qualify to walk with you. Don't settle for unqualified company. Oh, God, y'all not helping me. That's not just a good saying. Those are instructions. Oh, pastor, that's good. You know how church folk do. Oh, my God, pastor, I'm going to make a note. Don't make a note. Adjust your heart. Don't settle for unqualified company. Don't come down. Be nice to everybody. Love everybody. But don't let everybody into your secret space. It's private. It's private. It's private. I'm about to go too far right here, and then I'm going to close. But I'm going intentionally. <laughs> when I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, my mother tried to teach me a lesson. And at first it sounded like a, a lesson of home training and decor. But as you get older, you realize she was saying more than she said. And so she had some company. 
And I was a little boy. I don't know no better. I remember it. My, my long-term memory, good. My short-term memory, I can't hardly remember what I had for, for dinner Thursday. I, I, I No, no, but my long-term. And I remember where we were, 719 Langston Terrace, Northeast. And I had to be under eight because we moved away from there when I was eight years old. So I was younger than eight. I was about five or six. And there was company downstairs. And I came running downstairs in my underwear because I wanted some Kool-Aid. And I came running downstairs in my underwear. And my mama stopped me at the bottom of the steps and she saw me. She said, I, I stop. Go on back upstairs. I didn't raise you like that. Go upstairs and put some clothes on. She said, boy, don't show your private round here. She wasn't talking about what I perceived. She was saying that there's some places in your life. I know the natural implication. I get that. I get it. But she was saying, learn. That your private thing. See, if you can't protect your private, then you can't protect your private. Oh, Jesus, that didn't go so good. There's some things that you have to guard with your life. Guard it. Don't let everybody in your private space that you fight for to be with God. And then you let everybody with an unproved walk know your mysteries. And then they'll write a decree that you need to keep silent. And you'll think the people that's in the, that's in the government and the kingdom of Babylon with you are for you, but they're not. And when Daniel knew the decree had been signed, he prayed anyway. I, I challenge you this week, this first week of October, year of our Lord, 2020, we're about to go on a fast. Oh, God, Pastor, we're going fa- to we're gonna go on a fast. Call it what you want. Maybe it's a regimen. One hour every day this week, you are going to do your own praying. One hour every day this week, you're going to do your own praying. I don't care if you got to get up at five, then you're going to get up at four. I don't care if you get home from work at six, then you're going to pray from eight to nine. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know. But I hear one hour. You have been dependent on everybody else to do your prayer. And I mean silence. Tell the children, go somewhere, get quiet. I don't want to hear nothing. If you got the TV on in your room, turn it down, shut your door. I'm going to walk through this house and I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. And whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. One hour this week, you're going to do your own praying. Stop depending on everybody else. Don't call no prayer partner. Don't text nobody and say, I'm praying this week. Pray with me. You could tell them pray. Invite somebody on this. But one hour this week, every day. Some of y'all already got dinner plans, so I ain't going to spoil your dinner plans. Yeah, I'm feeling a little mischievous today. So do your thing today. But tomorrow, you give God an hour. And Tuesday, give God an hour. On Wednesday, tell your boyfriend don't call you. Give God an hour. On Thursday, Friday, I'm not going to do all your praying for you. I'm not. I'm going to pray for you. I am. I'm going to do I'm going to do all of my fiduciary responsibilities as it relates to fivefold ministry that I walk in. I'm not going to abandon you. But you're going to pick up the pace here because I feel the weight of too many of you looking for your answers in a bottle. Looking for your answers in a pipe or a joint or in some gummies or in some some TV entertainment. And some of you have Netflixed out. When will enough be enough? I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Can you hear me? Somebody type or text or something. Pastor, I hear you. I hear you. 
I hear, not just you, I hear God calling me. Where are the saints that'll be honest and say, Pastor, this message ain't new. God been calling me for a while. I've just been slow, but I appreciate the pick me up. Come on here. I, I'm just your energy drink today. I, I'm just I'm just trying to supply what God's already put in you. My time is up. We got to take communion. I get it. I get it. But I'm not going to let you die with all of the glory and the grace in you. I've come to st- help you stir up the gifts. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gifts that's already in you stir them up. This ain't new. You're not looking for nothing. It's in you. It's there. It's there. And when Daniel knew, they said, don't pray. He said, you say what you want. I'm going to do this knowing I'm going to the lions. I'm going to do this knowing you're going to lie on me. I'm going to provoke you haters to lie on me. That's a word. You've been lied on before. And some folks ain't tell the lie. They told your truth. The people you trusted your secrets with. So you've been truth on too. It doesn't make a difference. They meant it for evil. It's okay. It's okay. It brought you to where you are. And now we're going to do more. Merciful God, thank you for this lesson today. Oh, I thank you. Whom you love, you chasten. I feel chastened. I feel like you have called me to another place where I have to commit to a life of prayer even the more, more than my normal time. But I thank you for the call of consistency. I thank you. Diabetes dried up today. I thank you. Cancer dried up today. I thank you because decisions was made that back, back and push off the sickness and the disease that would have followed us otherwise had you not checked us and told us to pray even while we are in Babylon. And Lord, we read your word over in Revelation 17, 18, 19, 20. Babylon is falling. Ha! Sando Shaman, they say, it's not a physical place for us. Babylon, the place where we serve the adversary, is falling. And we're yours now. And we're yours. And we're yours. And we thank you for the inspiration to seek your face, not just your hand. God, we want to be more like you. I thank you for all of the yeses on this line. All of the dads that say, yes, God, I'm I'm, going to pray that hour. All of the moms that said, yes, Lord, I really need to seek you for that hour. All of those that won't wait for Monday, God, they're going to, some going to start today. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for this word today. Oh, God, we didn't get a new car with this word today, but we got a new car. We didn't get a new house, Lord, but we moved the hindrance of what was holding up the new house. God, you said that no good thing will you withhold from us who walk upright before you. So all we have to do is walk upright and no good thing will be withheld. We thank you that we're protected from all manner of sickness and disease. Oh, God, we're not going to just focus on COVID. It seems to be what's on the news. But we, we, we were delivered from heart attacks and aneurysms and strokes. We thank you. We'll guard our nakedness. We'll run upstairs into the heavens and put on our robes of righteousness and then return for the world to see. And we thank you. We're protecting our privates. The space that's only reserved for you will protect that. And we bless you now. Lord, if there's anybody on this line that wants to give their life to you, God, I thank you. Could I ask all of you that's watching right now just to pray with two or three people that's online right now? They're like, wow, that preacher, he go hard, but I I do need to get closer to God. You never ask the Lord to be your Lord. See, now... I don't say this to be popular. Now we got (laughs) e-church, yeah, electronic church, but we got church, okay? So everybody, far and near, pray this with me, along with those that that, that are watching. 
and just say, Jesus, I want to be saved. I believe that you died for me. I believe you're the son of God. And I confess that you are Lord. And according to the scriptures, salvation has now come to my house. I receive it by the shed blood of the lamb. I'm saved. Such a simple prayer. If you meant it, then heaven is your home. God, I love it. I felt like somebody prayed that prayer. I didn't say throw your cigarettes away. I didn't say, D listen, you start somewhere, okay? You start somewhere, and that's your start. And so somebody tell God, thank you, because I believe right where I sit, somebody gave their life to Christ today. Now join us and pray. And if you don't know what to say for a whole hour, Pastor, I don't know if I can pray for an hour. Well, then just get in the corner and pretend like you're praying. Lord, I'm trying, but I don't know what I'm supposed to say. And then just say what comes. You don't have to be pious and merciful. God, I come in the names of Jehovah. Just say, God, my name is Rudolph, and, 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 and I, I just want to be better. Don't complicate it. Keep it simple. I just want to be better. Help me be better. Help me not do what I did. Show me the path. Teach me how to study your word. Just be honest. You don't have to have a particular tone to talk to God. <laughs> Just, Father, help me. Just help me. I believe you, Lord, so you can do all things. I love you today. And when Daniel knew, when did he go praying? When he knew the decree was signed. When he knew the writing had been done. It was, oh, that's what y'all want, but that's what y'all want. I'm not that guy. You can't bully me away from the glory of God. I'm not that guy. So I love you. Get your communion. We're going to prepare our hearts to commune together. There she go. There go an angel in this house. Got on all of her white. Isn't that pretty? Y'all, you got on your white? Yeah. Was the saints fussing with pastor today? They were not fussing. They won't fuss they, they didn't say amen at all, though, did they? They said amen all day, sir. They, they said one or two amens. Okay, well, those the three of you that said amen, I appreciate. <laughs> My wife said you won't fuss and she saw somebody's comment. I don't know. But, but, but the Lord bless you. Not going to do all your praying. I'm announcing to you now. I'm not going to do your praying for you. It's so simple. Why? I don't know the things you really need. I could just pray. You know how many people, pastors, are responsible for? I'm supposed to know everything about you. I'm still learning things about me. I'm going to pray for you and with you. But you're going to do your own praying. Stop waiting for somebody to encourage you. You're broken hard. You just, you just got attention-seeking behavior. That's what you got. You just want to be seen. Let's pray. Okay? I love you. Get your communion. Prepare it. Oh, the pastor's aide, the president of the pastor's aide committee done woke up now. Lord Jesus, they, she in there trying to take church her job. She playing the drums or something. You have your communion? Let's commune together. Come here, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sit with Papa. Come on. We're going to take communion. Me, you, and, and your congregation. Well, you got a congregation. Come on, me, you, and your congregation. We're going to take communion. Come on, let's, can, can we pray for a second? Father, thank you for this time where we get to commune with our families. What the enemy meant for evil, you meant for good. Because otherwise, some of our families would have come for communion and some would not have. But now, mothers and fathers get to commune with sons and daughters and grandchildren all in one family, under one roof, one heart, to one Lord. We thank you. Look at the miracle. We get to commune with our children. Look at the miracle. We get to commune with our wife who maybe wouldn't have come to church, or our husband who might have been homesick, but now he could commune with us. Look at the miracle. And so, Lord, 
We give thanks for this time of communion right now. Now, Lord, I, I do bless every home. And we say corporately, strengthen our homes, strengthen our marriages, strengthen our children, strengthen our resolve. Lead us in prayer every day this week. Let us know what time you want to meet with us. God, will do it early morning. We'll do it in the evening. We'll do it in the noon. And some of us will even pray more than an hour. But we thank you because we, we hear that we have to show up even though the decree has been signed against us. Trying to, life is trying to scare us to silence, but we refuse to obey that. We will stay strong. We will stay vigilant. The adversary is just seeking whom he may devour, but he won't find nobody in this crew because we will be praying. Now, this bread that represents your broken body and this cup, your shed blood, we pray that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says, yeah, that on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. You all ready? Amen. And when he'd given thanks, I'm having trouble with mine. I like the old school where they serve you the, the crackers and the wafers. Thank you, wife. Okay. I'm good now. Are you good? <laughs> The same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke the bread. And he said to everyone, take, eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Let's all eat together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And likewise, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he said, this is the cup of the New Testament, my blood. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we all drink together? Bless his name. Hallelujah. Lord, and we thank you. And we thank you so very much. And we thank you so very much. Oh, bless his name. Wow, can you feel that? There's healing. <laughs> There's healing. There's healing in our communion. Communing with him. Don't let nobody do your praying. You go to God for yourself. And the, the underlying thing that I didn't get to, we might get to Wednesday, is the privilege of being able to go for yourself. You don't have to wait. Pastor, I sent you a message. Are you praying? Well, suppose my internet was shut down. You could go to God for yourself. Whatever I'm going to say, you're going to say. Now, I get it. I get it. There's a particular grace on my life that you want to tap into. And there's a particular grace on your life that I want to tap into. I get it. I do. I know I do. I get it. However, you're going to do your own praying right through here. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. And so is the Holy Ghost. And he will make intercession for us. For we know not what to pray for as we are. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. Make an intercession. The Holy Ghost is, is giving you what to say. You are coming. You can't lose. It's going to be a great week. One last thing before we go. Let's worship and I give you. <laughs> Amen. It's time that we present our gifts before God, our tithe, our offering. Um, we're not thieves. We're not robbers. We're not beggars. We're not even in trouble, okay? God promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Who are giving our envelopes today? Let me see. Let me get my glasses on. Who is this? Michaela? Michaela, you got past the envelopes today? Michaela, are you sick? Look at her. Don't she look pretty? Don't, do y'all see Michaela? No. I need y'all to get. Michaela, how many envelopes do you have? You have 15 envelopes? Mm -hmm. You need 15 people to do this right now? Okay, come on, 15. Where are y'all? 
Bless him, bless him, little Miss Michaela. Bless her now. Get up, Michaela. Go down that aisle over there. That aisle over there. They they've been a little slow over there. So go down that aisle over there. That one right there. Go down. Get get that one. <laughs> go down there. Go on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. There's nobody looking in their pocketbook when you come by to pretend like they're doing something. No, no. Just stand right there. Fold your arms and <laughs> until they get. I have so much fun with you. I love you all. Come on. So so with so with Pastor. Would you please so with me? Um, and we we have responsibilities and bills, and and we thank you for those of you that helped us pay um, um, all of our tax bills and things in there. There's always so many things in the work, and we got a ton of things that are in the works right now. I promise you, I promise you, if I told you what was going on now in the midst in the midst of COVID, um, you'd be absolutely amazed. My my good brother um, out in Vegas. My pastor, Bishop Thomas, I love you, brother, Bishop Ronald Thomas. Um, and I, I hope that next time, y'all, when the COVID is gone, that when y'all go to Vegas, trying to trying to trying to hit the jackpot. That, I'm gonna tell you what the jackpot is when you go to Bishop Thomas's church, because <laughs> that's a preacher. Um, he's a phenomenal minister. We love him and his wife and his kids. Um, some of you um, remember when his son Josiah was here, um, so and he played for us. A little bit. So this is his dad, okay? So he came over here and I popped him in the head and he went back home and his dad popped him in the head and he's doing real good now. Thanks be to God. Um so Bishop, I love you, man. Um how many envelopes? Michaela, Michaela only gave out five envelopes. Michaela, Michaela, go down that row over there. Go go over there. Okay. Seven. Okay. You only got eight envelopes left. Okay, wave them high, baby. Wave them high. Wave your envelopes and tell it. Go on down the front row too. Go down the front. Come back up here. To go to the front row. Get all them, them. Get all them elders and the deacons and and the worship people. Get all them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now go on back down there where the mothers are. Yeah. Now go on over there. Those visitors. Tell the visitors we we accept their gifts. Um, 501c3. We are tax deductible. Amen. <laughs> Michaela, you only got count on Michaela. How many you got? You got six left. You, you got Michaela. You got six. You got five left, girl. You're doing good. You're doing good. Come on. You got five. You got five. You only got five left. <laughs> Your pastor is so silly, ain't he? Everybody say I have the silly pastor. I invited people to be with us today, and you're acting up all morning long. I can't help it. I, I'm just happy in Jesus. I'm thankful to be alive. Michaela, just go on through there and give them envelopes to anybody. Just put one in their hand. They only, they only have to like you. Run back to your mom and daddy because your daddy big man, so don't worry about it. He'll take care of you. Every, <laughs> everything's all right. Pastor, love you. How many of you will say, Pastor, I'm praying with you this week? Why did anybody say they're praying with me this week? Saints, we are, listen, Mando Shebasata, we are called to be saints. Let's answer the calling. If we open our mouth, we can push this disease out of our county, out of our state, out of our country. I ain't got time to be fighting over this and fighting over that. Let's fight over the kingdom's over the kingdom's work, okay? I'm not going to tell you, everybody, meet me at 5 a.m. Because I'm not going to get up at 5 a.m. Because I don't go to bed till about 3. I, I pray at night. So you do what works for you. Pastor, can we have 5 a.m.? Sure we can. Get up and pray. <laughs> yes, it's not hard to have 5 a.m. prayers away. Just get up and have 5 a.m. prayer. You want me to get online and have 5 a.m. prayer? I might do that. I just don't feel led to right this day. I might do it Thursday and Friday. Okay? I, I might. Um, or I might invite you to be up and pray with me at midnight from midnight to 2. How about that? Like Paul and Silas. And at midnight. Paul prayed. Oh, yeah. So I love you. God bless you. Um, have a, a great day. I think we only got one or two envelopes left. Um, we're the last two people. Come on. Sow your seed. Um, give your tithe. We, we're not going to resort to being thieves and, and my offerings. And, and, and just know, Pastor, love you. Worship team, I appreciate you. Didn't you all enjoy the worship team earlier today? I appreciate them for their sacrifice, their hard work. They're always on the on the one with Pastor. They keep it 100 all the time. I'm grateful for you. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling, he'll present you faultless. And the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. 
Amen. I love you. Text three people. Tell them you love them. Go ahead. They only have to text you back.